All right, Shaholics, well, welcome back to another episode. Just dropped the kayak in the water and we are gonna get out on the Back Bay or Tidal River again today. And if you saw my last video, uh, we got out and fished this same general area for the, our first time and we learned uh, quite a bit. And uh, today we're just gonna see if uh, we can learn a little bit more or use some of the knowledge we learned yesterday uh, to apply it to today and see if we can do any better. So uh, let's get out there and uh, see if we can catch some stripers. All right, and off we go. I'm actually pretty excited about today's outing because today is actually gonna be like spring type weather. It's supposed to get up to like 75, 80 degrees. So that is gonna be absolutely gorgeous. We're gonna probably have to end up shedding some layers, but that'll be all right. All right, well, I think we found the edge of the channel. It's just about starting to drop off to about eight, nine feet. And we're gonna start off with this bomber long shot in like a bunker pattern. And typically I would probably start off with a shad to troll, but I just wanted to try something different this morning. You never know. And uh, the main forge back here is large adult bunker. So a bigger presentation like this might uh, get these fish to bite. That's uh, what we found out uh, yesterday when uh, I was throwing the smaller shads and then I switched to this bigger shad and this is what they really like to eat. All right, well, we trolled up pretty far. Not a single tap, just some weeds here and there. So we're gonna pop a Yui and uh, we trolled up tide. Now we're gonna try and go down tide. Sometimes making a down tide pass gets these fish just to react to the bait and not really get a good look at it. To be honest though, I haven't really marked a whole lot. Hmm. My entire screen, you know, just went, you know, completely dark. I wonder if that's bunker underneath me. Got a little bunker snag. Let's see what it is. Shot a bite. Kind of woke me up a little bit. I was starting to nod off. <laughs> I'm kind of tired. I fished uh, about four hours last night before launching the kayak, and it was pretty dismal. Only caught uh, a couple little cocktail bluefish, no bass. There's a fish. Boom. Finally. That took quite some time to finally get this bite. Feels like a decent fish too. On the bama. Trolling up current too. Whew. Wasn't marking a single fish either, which makes this, the, the hookup <laughs> even more surprising. Feels like a pretty decent one too. Oh yeah, man. Whew. Whoa. This fish has got some shoulders. And oh my gosh, look at all these marks right there. There are a lot of fish that just appeared out of nowhere. They're probably rushing down tide as this water starts to drop. Oh, where did this fish come from? Oh, whoo, whoo, whoo. Please stay hooked, baby. Please stay hooked. Oh, here we go. That's the bass we were looking for today. Whew. Way to start it on a high note, right? Booyah. That's a fatty. All right, well, kind of convenient. The wind and current pushed me right up on the bank. 
So we're just gonna bring this fish into some nice shallow water and get a good look at her. It's a real nice hefty striper on this light tackle setup. Oh man, look at that fatty. All right, well, check out that solid striper right there on the bomber long shot. I would uh, guesstimate probably about 20, maybe 25 pounds. Definitely a real hefty fish, real fat, probably uh, full of adult bunker. And uh, that's why she ate that bait right there. Whew. Let's get her unhooked and uh, send her back. I took the liberty of just throwing her on the boga real quick. She's 24 pounds on the dot. Really sweet. What a way to start the day. My gosh. And there she goes, kicking off hard. Well, it only took a couple hours of trolling around this bummer long shot to get a decent bite, but uh, hey, it paid off. It was totally worth it. And a uh, super fun fight on the seven foot six uh, Mojo medium fast action inch rod with 4,000 Tsunami Evict, 15 pound test, Green Moss Power Pro Braid, 40 pound floral leader. That was just uh, an epic fight. And I didn't need to beach the kayak. I could have, you know, did everything out there on the water, but uh, I just wanted to, you know, get a cool shot of it and get an accurate weight. And uh, that was cool to, to do everything uh, safely and release the fish unharmed. And uh, that was just beautiful. So uh, let's get back out there and uh, see if we can get back on them because we did mark a whole lot more fish that are pushing through. Uh, now that this tide is getting lower, we're getting down to like the last like couple hours of the outgoing. So pretty sweet. Let's get back out there. So I'm throwing it out there only about like 50, 60 yards. And uh, you know, every five minutes or so, if I'm not bumping bottom, then I'll let it out another five or 10 yards until uh, I feel it hit bottom or uh, until I get a bite or, you know, hook up. Just gotta kind of you know give it a little bit of variation otherwise uh if you just say let it you know cast it out there 50 60 yards and don't change where it's at you're not going to change where it's at in the water column and then therefore you're not going to find the strike zone oh man look at this got a bunch of marks down there they're not the big fish though they look like medium sized fish oh there's something that's not what we're looking for. Oh, don't tell me. He just cut me off. Pretty sure he just cut me off. Wow. And that was something small. It kind of felt like a bluefish. I wonder if uh, there were more than one of them and if they were fighting at it, sometimes they, you know, they'll chop up around by the leader trying to rip the, the lure out of the other fish's mouth and that's how you lose fish like that. But uh, you know what, I think I have another one, but just a different color. Oh yeah, we're packing. We've got uh, this color here. This is like a uh, mullet color. Water is kind of discolored off, you know, discolored and uh, murky. I'm not really sure if they're gonna care whether or not it has five or six dots on it <laughs> or, uh, you know, just a silvery flashy side, but we're gonna try it. Wow, and check this out. Giant marks right below the kayak while we're rigging up. Just great. There's one. Boom. Greedy little bass. There he goes, so self-releaser. Let's get back on him. Well, there he is again. Oh, he came off, I think. Yep, he came. I know he's still on there. <laughs> he's that small. See you later.
Oh, there's one. Jesus. I think I was weeded up too and I was trying to reel this in. This guy crushed it like right below the surface. There he goes. Like there's a big fish right there. There's another big one. We're gonna go a little bit down the current and then try and pass over this same spot here. This is where we hooked the, the first one. So it was kind of like back from the point a little bit. All the little ones were catching like right off the end of the point. Wow, you know what? The water temp finally hit 60. There's a fish. That might be a little bit nicer one. Keep her size, hopefully, come on. Nah, he's probably a rat. Oh my gosh, look at how he ate it. Look at that, head first, are you serious? I don't even know if he's hooked. He's, he's only hooked with one hook. The, the, uh, the head of the, the bomber is just pinned up against his mouth. That's why I even stayed buttoned. Whew. Look at you, little guy. Oh gosh, that one slammed it. So you see now how I'm fishing it. <laughs> pretty cool so when I bring my rod tip back that's actually the pause and uh, they're doing exactly what I do when I fish this bait in the surf they hit it right on the pause whoa you just got a tad bigger Woo -hoo -hoo. you got a lot bigger What? It's like 27, 28 inches. This little guy pulled hard. So what I learned, and the reason why I'm catching them so frequently right now is because the tide is winding down, and uh, typically strivers like to, to feed on the upswing and the downswing. So the downswing of this outgoing tide is uh, when they like to chomp, and I think it's because you know they get pulled out from up, you know, from up in the, the headwaters and they get pulled out with the bait and with the current and with the tide. And then they get down here and uh, they just put on the feed bag. Ooh, going over some big fish right now. 12, 13 feet down. I'm gonna try speeding up to get that bomber to go down a little deeper. Let out a little more line as well. Hopefully I'm not weeded up. Come on, come on fish, come on. That's the problem with the bomber, it gets weeded up easily, especially when there's like this grass, like, like, I don't know, grassy, like seaweed down there. There's a big fish. Oh my gosh. Oh boy. That one was running to Montauk. <laughs> Told you, I marked him. Nantucket sleigh ride, how about that? Might have lost them. Unless he's swimming towards me, dang it, we lost them. Oh, man. You know, I would say we're a little undergunned for the size fish that uh, we have a chance of tangling with today, but uh, it's just too dang fun to want to use anything heavier. This can get the job done. We just got to play them safe. And you know, the reason I probably lost that one is because I turned the kayak too soon and this current is pushing me towards him. And uh, there was too much slack in the line. He popped off. All right. So we just did about like two, three passes. And uh, we're getting bites, but it, it seems like they're not eating as well because this tide is starting to slack up a little bit. Oh, never mind. Never mind. I was on the retrieve, dude. Jeez. Come on, baby. <laughs> oh, 
there's nothing better than this boys what oh come on oh well it's all right there he is that's what i'm talking about come on please stay hooked baby that's the bite we wanted I'm sweating bullets. Oh, Whew. got my winter dry top on because it was really chilly this morning. Oh, we're getting a workout in. Whew. Nice, nice fish. Oh yeah. Whew. Look at the bend in that light action rod. Whew. A little sporty, ain't it? <laughs> Very sporty. Barely hooked. Oh yeah, we got her. It's probably another uh, 24, 25 pounder. Whew, those hooks were in there good that time. Whew. All right, let's get a nice release. This is uh, definitely a really good, fun quality fish to catch uh, in the back bay. She's probably ready to go too. Whew. You gotta love them when the water's cold like that. Doesn't take uh, much time to revive them. Whew, that's what I'm talking about. And uh, yeah, one or two more passes, fish or no fish, and then we're gonna get out of here. Oh, oh my gosh, there's another one. Biggin. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to pedal forward just a little bit longer, make sure those hooks are penetrated. That's where I failed on our second big one we hooked. This one's way out there. Oh my gosh, is it a giant bluefish? It might be a giant bluefish. Just flew into the air. Are we gonna end on a gator blue? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you gotta love that. Hearing the 4,000 of Vic just screaming. <laughs> Getting a sleigh ride in now. big bluefish he is staying down deep unless he's foul hooked in some way oh my gosh oh my gosh what a battle jeez he might be foul hooked or something I like can't lift him up I don't want to put too much pressure on him either because I don't want to break the line Oh, yep, that's why. Snagged in the back. I called that. It's still a giant bluefish. Oh my gosh. Oh, we got him. Oh. <laughs> there she is, a closer look at that giant gator blue. And I put her on the boga quick. She weighs 16 pounds, so that is this is an absolute tank. Thanks for the fight, baby. There she goes. All right, well, what a day. I'm breaking a sweat out here catching these big fish, and uh, I'm thinking, you know what, we might as well quit on a high note, so uh, I'll see you guys back at the beach. Oh, man so hot <laughs> i'm used to fishing in like 40 to 50 degree temps and right now i think it's about like 80 degrees 75 
Whew. All right, well, this is about it. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to give the video a big fat like. Just hit that thumbs up right below the video and subscribe to keep up to date. I'll put my full kayak rig and my tackle that I was using today in the description below. Although the rod, I wouldn't highly recommend for this type of fishing scenario, like fish into the 20 pound class and bigger. I should have been using like a medium heavy or a heavy action spinning rod in shore mojo. That, that's a medium fast action. So it was a little light. And um, as you saw for a couple of the bigger fish, it uh, posed uh, some difficulty uh, setting the hook and penetrating those hooks. But I uh, still had a blast out there. I got my heart racing, I got to work out. And uh, to be honest, I'm actually not even at the launch right now. I'm out at the same point where we're catching the fish off of because, uh, you know, this is fishaholic fishing, right? Uh, so I'm curious just to see if we can uh, take a few casts here and get them from the surf. Um, I think that would be pretty cool. And uh, from here on out, um, we're going to be heading to Montauk probably in like a week, week and a half. So uh, again, subscribe to keep up to date so you know when I'm heading out there or, uh, or follow me on Instagram, actually. That's the best way to like keep up to date like day to day to where I'm at and uh, where I'm like catching fish and I think we are in store for a great striper surf season so be sure to hit the link down in the description for a Montauk guided surf trip if uh, that interests you and uh, what better way to social distance than head down miles and miles of beautiful Montauk shoreline right <laughs> so uh, thanks for watching again and like always live to fish fish to live